let's get this show on running on the road so we don't keep anybody late. Uh, dinner is waiting. Uh, all good things are uh, waiting for, the, for a nice, fun evening. And this is going to be an exciting conversation. We are here this evening to help you succeed. Uh, to help you see the things that is really progressively going to be changing the dynamics of the future of work, the future of workplace, the future uh, of uh, youth, uh, the future of business, the future of education. And we couldn't have picked up a better time to have this conversation to discuss the opportunity youth. And this is why we said, if you look at the, the title in itself, Imagine Opportunity Youth, basically is how do we really start converting what we think at one point of time a failure or a liability to a success uh, story. Uh, just a brief introduction uh, to who we are of Talents of Endearment. In simple terms, simple words, we create a relevant world. We connect the world together to build amazing things. Just take a time to visit our website www.talentsofendearment.net and uh, to see all the amazing things that we have been doing in 12 countries so far with over 900,000 students around the world and majorly in India, UAE, uh, the Gulf region, and we're expanding with it, uh, inshallah, uh, very quickly. Uh, today, I'm lucky to be joined by two distinguished speakers, uh, the handsome Dr. Nabil al -Qadi. He is the uh, president of Khawarizmi International College, but he's also the CEO of Khawarizmi Holding Group. And also the, the uh, troublemaker, uh, Dr. Walid uh, Ali, he's a uh, futurist. And he has, he's a guy that he doesn't like to see himself that way, but he's a guy that's supposedly with a crazy vision. Uh, the things that is going to help to transform, because we could, unless it is crazy, it's not transforming. It is not going to make things happen unless it is exciting, that you feel the, 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 the blood rush uh, in your body that is going to make things happen. And let's start with this guy, uh, Reed Hoffman. How many of you do, do know Reed Hoffman? Uh, came up saying, uh, and a lot of industries started looking at the, what he said as a lead or a trend, uh, that the 2 billion jobs is going to be lost by 2030. It's natural for him to say that because he's a guy that actually started eBay in 2002. And uh, when he sold it, they started uh, LinkedIn later to sell it for $26 billion in 2016 to Microsoft. Like a guy. I like what he said. He always uh, he talks about when you start a product, your success is actually to flip it fast. So he started successful, sell it successful. This is how he's making his fortunes. And this is what he's actually doing behind with a number of products in the world. But I have a, I have a lot of concerns with the statements that he has, the 2 billion jobs lost. And let's look at some of the studies that's in the world. This is parts, this actually was done by McKinsey and confirmed by Deloitte uh, with the same numbers. Looking at 127 million people, that's going to be youth, that's going to be in jobs place in, by 2030 between the age of 15 to 24. This is the, the age, the, the, the time, the lifetime that they start uh, working actually in the Arab world. We look at 21 million people that are really displaced due to complex regions uh, in the Arab world. We're looking at 93 million uh, ill-equipped learning inst institutions uh, for students. Now, when you look at these numbers, these are staggering numbers, then we are really chasing uh, studies by the world, uh, how to address them and how to solve them. So today we're going to be look at what international community think is going to happen in the next 10 years. We're going to look at what our colleague, Dr. Nabil, from the academic perspective is going to think is going to be. And from the futuristic uh, perspective, Dr. Walid is going to be. And then we're going to share with you our own perspectives, what have, what the, how we are really looking at as talents of endearments to evolve this transmission out. And so this, the studies introduced seven game changers. And one of those game changers, the top four that I like to address, to concentrate in this conversation, is the competitive uh, talent. To create 100 million uh, uh, jobs for youth by 2030. That seems likely possible, but uh, uh, very improbable to happen. 
because there is a number of challenges, real on the grounds of the challenges, unless we transparently address those cha challenges, we're not gonna get overcome them. How are we gonna be creating 30 global superstars firms in the region that actually you're talking about the Microsoft, you're talking about the Coca-Cola, you're talking about the, uh, the Nikes and the likes. How are we gonna be creating the 2 million uh, new entrepreneurs, enterprises, uh, people, but how are we gonna create uh, uh, gender uh, 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 equity uh, in order to actually build up $1.9 trillion uh, in addition to the economic uh, uh, growth in the Arab world. And looking at those uh, transitioning questions that we have, so we are looking at global competitive talent, 100, uh, 100 million plus that we're going to look at to create. And Dr. Nabil is going to be looking at those. Dr. Walid is going to tell us where, where we're going to pick them, how we're going to pick them out. We're looking at how to homegrown for global firms. What are the challenges in the clinic that we're going to focus on? The innovation industries, those are small little ones, and the gender parity in order uh, to, to boost the, 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 the uh, economic value uh, in the Arab world. And so we're looking at global competitiveness. Everybody's talking about the uh, technology era, the exponential transformation of this technology. We're talking about degree programs in technology. And uh, th then we started talking about the social, emotional technology skills. How we going to, in order to create that balance, not to drive everybody out of their own minds. And that I have a challenge with it because when you, when I look at the, 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 the current trend, what is going on right now, uh, we are actually seeing a blend in the hire between robots and people. And where, ev where, where everybody is looking at the, the virtual realities, we are talking about space industries, we are talking about robotics uh, industries. Uh, and, and that in itself is going to actually complicate the problems to create 100 million jobs or to create that mega superstar companies that we are looking for. Com robots are robots, robotic skills are replacing human skills on jobs today. Uh, we're talking in, instead at one point of times, we used to have robots serving people who are serving people. Now we are having people serving robots who are serving people. So we had a flip in the, in, in the mindset in the culture of business and how things are being run. Robots are they're coming up to start running banks, running your kitchen, running in, making a decisions, basically who, how to get hired, your human resources, the robots going to start picking you up. Uh, they're going to start controlling your pay. They're going to start terminating you. They're, they're the ones going to be looking, making the decisions based on the criteria we program. This guy doesn't fit, dump him. Doesn't change. We don't need it. So now instead of us running robots, robots are going to be running people. This is in the current mindset, the way things are running uh, in, as, as Reed Hoffman sees it. Because he's a techie guy. And what he sees basically is the, the transformation is going to start in technology and the transformation. So we are at a tug war between robots, the automation, and people. But here I'm not talking about the, the, the capital people. I'm talking about the human capital, the little people, the youth. Now, they are the one who has a stand to lose uh, uh, the, the most in this bunch because everybody, the, 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 the mindset that they, of the leaderships in the, in the world aren't really aligned well with the, uh, what is best interest. Then that creates another problem when we talk about the creating a homegrown global businesses, okay, the superstars. How are we going to be allowing people, students, little guys with very little money in order to be able to build those mega firms? Okay, where we don't have, we don't, when you look at the, the, the current status of the Arab world economic structure uh, scale, we don't have really big grown, homegrown companies except the oil companies like Adnoc or uh, Aramco in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, outside of that, we have none. So where are we going to come up with those 30 superstar companies? And when we're talking about the innovation, how are we going to be, especially with the startups ideas, basically, and when you look at the average is 77 uh, uh, global scales, uh, ex with the except of UAE being the top in the Arab world and yet ranked number 40 uh, with, with the opportunities of our startups that they're going to create. Now look at Saudi Arabia, that is, a, that is a large economy, 
but yet we're talking about this, uh, uh, rank number 80 on the global scale for uh, for startups so we have a huge challenge that's going to come up and where is that well what are we going to make up that difference when we are talking about innovative innovation industries the small small pieces the small guys that is going to be able to start their own businesses with the old, with the current mindset the, with, with we are when we are sticking sticking to the old ways of doing business we don't want to break it. even with covid-19 has really crashed the table for us to see things as bad as it is and we're still refusing and resisting and we're trying to hold back to the old things that we are missing uh, as a business when we're looking at the parity of the gender parities the 17th the 1.9 trillion dollars women today the two years ago study that done women in the world controls 30 trillion dollar buying power literally they have they control 30 trillion dollar purchasing power power in the world but yet we are we are undermining their abilities to contribute to the local economies in the Arab world for a variety of reasons how are we going to change those dynamics how are we going to really create a culture that is it, 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 uh, versatile that is agile that is able to accommodate the the, the natural so we're looking at the the, the the imagining the dream list that's what i would like to do the type of education that has to be high to perform for high performance countries create the, equipping this the youth with the the right skills uh building the private cult cultures that to create opportunities uh creating export innovation and the, this dream list is talking about basically is creating an environment and this is basically the conversation today for everybody is to, to have a fair chance to succeed and be all what that can be everything that they dream uh to be so in order for us to really futurize careers i want to ask the dr nabil if you have two minutes to comment on what i just said before we go to the questions and answers uh please thank you Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bedes, for this uh, interesting, uh, you know, start of our conversation. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll take it from the first slide and the idea saying that uh, X number of jobs going to be disappearing or um, people going to lose their job. I have to uh, strongly disagree on that uh, because I believe what's going to happen is more a transformation in the job, a change in the job concept, in the need of the job and in the nature of the job. As much as some jobs might disappear, hundred and thousand gonna appear, you know, in compensation or in front of one lost a job. And a lot of jobs gonna change. And let me take a small example and I will stop there, you know, to not monopolize the discussion. <clears throat> Taxi driver. Look what was a taxi driver supposed to do before. The taxi driver was supposed, you know, to wait until you shake your hand and you stop him, you jump in, and then you, you give him the address and sometimes you guide him. Then he was supposed to have a navigator. And today, a taxi driver is an Uber driver. Who is supposedly to pay attention to the music you want to listen in the car? Who is supposed to pay attention to the cleanness of his car? Who is supposed to pay attention to the smell and the scent? he's having inside the car, why? Because the job changes and he gonna have a part of the revenue and he gonna have his tips basically from the company employing him or you know, allowing him to handle such kind of work based on that. So you see what's gonna happen? The Uber driver or the taxi driver in Uber has a job totally different from the taxi driver of 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. So, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Thank you, Dr. Nabil. Dr. Walid? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abed, for this. Actually, I'm a futurist, but always I look to the past and the long-term past to see what happened in the past so we learn to build a better future. So if we look, uh, we look a billion years ago, we find the age of hunting and gathering. There is one job, is hunting animals and feed ourselves. After that, 10,000 years back, we have the agriculture age, where we have also one job, which is the farming and agriculture. Then we have the first industrial revolution, and uh, which shifted 99% of farming job. And you know, in the first industrial revolution, we remain with like 3% farming and 97% people working on the industry. So the farmer, they build the new skills to feed the new industry, you know, they change the education, etc., and they move from the age of farming to the age of industry. 
The same thing with the second and the third industrial revolution. So we started the digital world. So if you don't reskill or upskill or de-skill yourself and get the new skills, you will not fit the new revolution. The same thing, we live in the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, of course we will lose, we will lose, you know, some job, but we will create other jobs. Like we, we have lost the farming job, but we have thousands of industrial jobs. We have lost some, uh, what we call blue color job in the third industrial revolution. And then we have a new white color job and so on. So in every revolution, this is common. We will lose a job, but we will have more than this lost job as a new job. But people, in order to gain this uh, revolution and in order to be part of this revolution, they have to gain new skills to be part of the revolution. So I agree with you, maybe we lost 127 million jobs, but I'm sure we will create more than that as a new job, but we have to reskill or upskill or de-skill ourselves. And this should be done through the education, the education system. All right, so uh, we, ha we have to look at this, uh, and this is what we are doing, you know, as a futurist, to, to see what's coming in terms of uh, technology and non-technological trend, and to see what are the uh, weak signals, the strong signals, to look at the new, new uh, uh, shapes of the market, and to look at how to build the skills to be part of the new shapes of the market, the new future jobs, and come back to the university to give or to train a center or whatever, to give the people these new skills to, to, to be part uh, of the job. So uh, we will not lose our uh, battle against the robot. Uh, and people, we the robot actually, uh, some people, they don't call artificial intelligence, they call it augmented intelligence. Because we augment the human, the robot will never, or the AI will never replace a human. The AI will support more people, so free people from the hard task take this hard task, but also these people should take new skills to uh, go to other tasks, to do other tasks, and we we'll leave the hard task and the uh, repetitive task to the, the, the robot and artificial intelligence. Thank you. Dr. Nabil, now you are an educator. You're running an institution. Your responsibility basically is to look at the future uh, prospects uh, in order to, uh, to, to, des to design the right programs uh, for the local market, the industries, and to prepare the students for it. Uh, what type of skills do you believe uh, graduates and youth needs to acquire for future jobs, let's say five years, 10 years from now, and how your institution is really working towards achieving that? Uh, this is a very, very important question, uh, Dr. Abad. And, and, and let me start by uh, uh, maybe answering uh, a more basic question. Is the education system today fit for purpose? Is the education system today really preparing the youth for the jobs of tomorrow? Or is the education system preparing the youth more for the job of today and yesterday? And I would tend to say that we are unfortunately uh, still in that status. Uh, look, very simple, look to the nature of the program and look to the existing program. Of course, in many countries like UAE, there is a lot of efforts from the governments and the authority, the quality assurance to oblige and to push the mammoth. You know, we usually call, especially in France, we call the education system a mammoth. You know, the mammoth is very powerful, right? But he's very slow moving and it's very difficult for him to make a change, you know? So um, we need, I think, to revamp the education system, not only by changing the content of our programs, but by changing the focus on it. Until now, and here I will join Dr. Walid, we are preparing the, 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 the youth with the skills needed for maybe the fourth industrial revolution. We are not yet in the fifth, second and tenth industrial revolution. Before, the university needs to be follower. Now, university needs to be leader, which means we need to revamp the program. We are still focusing on the hard skills or do you know mathematics? Do you know how to compute the formula? Do you know how to do a projection? Do you know how to build the card? And those are what Dr. Walid was saying, the hard jobs. Leave that for the machine. Leave that for the automate. Leave that for the uh, 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 robots. So what can a youth do? He need to ideate come up with new ideas. He need to be creative. 
he needs to be, you know, uh, disruptive. Are we preparing those youth for that? Not really, not 100%, because I believe the educational system, uh, regardless of what we do, we are still, um, our freedom of action is a little bit controlled. You know, we have a frames, we have regulators, we have models, and we are still there. Uh, so we need to do something else. And at KIC, we start doing it uh, by uh, changing a lot of components, not only in the courses, but mainly in the pedagogy. And I'll, 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 I'll finish my answer with this statement. Um, if you want to evaluate capacities of, you know, any kind of uh, 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 animals or humans existing, and, you know, you, it's like when you bring a lion, a leopard, an elephant, and a monkey. And you tell them, look, we have a test. You see that tree? Yeah, what are I going to do? You have to go up and bring that banana there. You know who is the winner, right? So, and that's what, unfortunately, we are doing in the education system. Everyone is having the same number of hours of math, the same number of hours of physics, the same number of hours of English, and everyone going to have the same exam. And then we tell to our students or to our alumni, hey, be creative. Hey, come on, put me in a situation when I am pushed to be creative. Create different personalized education to me, not to what you want. We claim very transparently that we are student centered. Everyone will claim that from Stanford University to Singularity University to Hawarism International College to Buraymi University, whatever. So, oh, we are student centered, you know? Our folks are our students. Hey, hold on. Have we never ever asked students what kind of course they want to be in a course of engineering? Have we never ever asked them what kind of exam or what kind of a project they want to have? I don't think so. We wanted them to ideate, but we are preparing them to just implement. And I will stop there for the moment. Dr. Walid, you heard Dr. Nabil what he just said. We're, yes, we're, yes. We're, not, we're not preparing the students to really be free to ask the question. So this is probably one of the main technical uh, questions uh, that, that needs to be addressed by the industries to collaborate with the education systems to convince them that something needs to be changed. So what do you think the non-technical challenges are facing the youth in the near and the long-term future? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I agree with Dr. Nabil because the, uh, before, as I mentioned in the third and fourth industrial revolution, the job is stable. You do the same thing till you get retired. But now we live in a voc voca future. What does that mean? Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And it's exponential future change. So, uh, and it's not the technology. We cannot blame the technology. So what we have to do, the education system should be also VOCA or uh, should be dynamic, should be agile. And we should prepare the student not only for specific topic, because this topic will change maybe in three, four years. So we should uh, provide the, the people and the student and the youth with what I call the long life skills. For example, when you teach them creativity or innovation or empathy, for example, uh, you teach them a skill that is used for long life. But if you teach them, for example, mechanical engineering, in the future we have autonomous driving car, you know, so they don't fit. So my idea is to change the education system to uh, teach the uh, future skills, to focus on the future skills, which uh, become long life skills used for a long time in a VOCA future. And these skills doesn't include to be technological, uh, creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, social, environmental skills, empathy, these are not technological, but they, the technology is a tool and using these skills, they can put these tools, we put these tools in the right hand to innovate and to, to prepare their future. And maybe we create what you said, a homegrown co company like Facebook or what we call, you know, the, the, the unicorn company in, in the Arab world. So the future skills are the key, I think, and the education system should become dynamic. But my point, it's not sometimes the problem of the higher education institute or the school, sometimes the government, you know, the government obliges you uh, to, 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 if you apply for a program in the government to get the accreditation, sometimes it takes one year, you know, and you have to run it for five years. So this long term, in a VOCA future, this long term pro program. So I think it's, you have to uh, change the ecosystem, not the, you know, the education institute. We have to also to change the 
the full ecosystem of education, the government, the civic society, the industry as well should be involved, and the academia, what we call the quadruple helix of the ecosystem of education. Dr. Nabil, but he was talking about uh, the Dr. Walid that uh, the, uh, we need to start considering the education system, the uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Now, that is extremely hard to convince regulators to accept those, uh, those new standards, to inject them, because it's hard for them to measure. Is it possible for education system to actually start be able to measure it for educator or for regulator to start embedding such standards into the education curriculum? I, w I will answer you by giving a proof of my answer. My answer okay. is yes, it is possible. And the proof I'm going to give you is something happening at the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I think you heard all about a couple of cases of uh, turbulent students. They don't bear the education system in the school, not because they are bad or not because, no, because they are, uh, you know, brilliant. They are genius. And those, <laughs> and those genius in general, they, they, they can't go to school, you know. If you put them in year one, year two, year three, you know, whatever grade, it's 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 so silly for them that they start being disruptive, you know, and they start being fighting and making, uh, you know, uh, uh, problems, etc. What the UAE did for that is a program called Rahal. You know, Rahal means traveler, right? Mm -hmm. And Rahal is saying, if you want to homeschool your kid, you call homeschooling. And what he has to do is only to pass the exams that we want him to pass. And we will give him a degree as if he was in school. And this was experimented. And you have kids who completed level one, level two, level three, level four in one year. Hmm. And they jumped. And Rahal gives the parent, hey, you believe your, your kids is genius? Of course, they will not accept to enroll your kids in, in that program just like this. There is a, a, a small assessment to make sure that, oh, it's not because you love your kid, you think he's genius. So this is a proof that it is possible if there is enough of futuristic view and there is a kind of flexibility given. And I believe it is there because what we need to do, we need the youth to come with idea. And idea means the following, I for innovative. We want them to be innovator, right? D, disruptor. We want them to be coming with disruptive things to shake what is happening because the technological and all the progress and the changes are happening in a very fast way that if we continue our regular classical way of building knowledge, we will not make it. So I for innovator, D for disruptor, E for enabler. It's very easy to have a nice idea, but transforming that idea with a lot of soft skills and being able, the long life learning capability, to choose the right tool, the right mechanism that will give you an efficient use. And that's what is smart, you know, use the right tool for the right, for the, in the right way and for the right problem. So I, D, E, innovative, disruptive, uh, enabler, and A, finally, for adaptative. They need to adapt to situation. They need to acquire that capability of adaptation. And I believe one maybe of the positive side of COVID is that it showed that the education system was resilient, but at the same time was agile enough. And the students and teacher, learner, and, and you know, educator was flexible enough to adapt to that. So I believe, yep, it is possible. It is happening. We have many, many examples. If you look to how Singularity University is working, if you look how um, there is a project, the I, I, I forgot the name, but it's implemented in Melbourne University, Minerva, Minerva, Minerva project. And the Minerva University concept, you know, it's one of the first curricula I have seen in the world, which will tell to the students after the first two years, hey, come on. I oblige you only on 30% of the curriculum. The other 70%, this is a basket. Choose what you want. That's where we need to go as educators. I, 
I agree with uh, what Dr. Nabil said, Dr. Walid, but here's my question or the puzzle that I have. In order, we always say is what the students need to do. We really need to start helping them to really define their pathway and by connecting them to business. What do you see the future opportunities for business to doing that, coming together with the students to really help educators see the possibilities of those transformational that Dr. Nabil was talking about, the idea concept? Yes, uh, I think uh, the problem between academia and Dr. Nabil would agree with me, uh, academia and, and the industry is a problem of trust, basically. The industry, they don't trust the outcome of uh, academia because, you know, industry, they are uh, profit, you know, centers and they want to make money and they, will, they want to finish project on time with, uh, you know, a high percentage of profit and so on. So, honestly, they don't want to waste time with the uh, academia to learn on the project, uh, million dollar project for industry. So, I think we have to, to, to increase this trust uh, uh, and we have to fill this gap. But the work, you know, is not only from the industry. We have to work to bring the industry to academia and also we have to work to bring the academia to the industry. Or to bring the academia to industry, but as Dr. Nabil said, we have to bring what is needed from the industry into the academia, innovation, all the, the skills needed for, by the industry, we bring them in our curriculum. So here the academia is more closer to the industry. And the industry also, we have to bring it more because industry, we, easily we can convince the industry, we, we can tell the industry, your input is coming from the academia. So we have to uh, bring your hand to academia and prepare the students so when they come to you as industry, they are ready. You know, and you don't waste time training them, etc., etc., and we save a lot of money to train them so they can work on your project. So this is what we do. So we have to select what, what are the needs of the industry and then we have to accommodate these needs into the curriculum or the training courses in the academia and then we have to fill this the bridge and I think using that we can uh, make the bridge between academia and industry so we prepare the, uh, the right outcomes to the industry and the industry will receive the right incomes and the trust will be built and this is you know the snowball if the trust is built one percent and later it will be five and so on. So this is the main problem we have to build the trust between academia and, and industry. Uh, yeah. Now, Dr. Dr. Nabil, Dr. Walid is saying we really need to restore the trust. And one of the vehicles that I see that to restore the trust is by actually engaging the industry in the curriculum development, in the educational pr pr progress of the students. Is, it, is this being done, for example, uh, at education level, at, your, at, your, at KIC level? I, or I think, uh, yeah, please. Right. Or it is, it is something that is actually uh, taboo, cannot be touched no, because I, of the regulators. I, I, I don't think this is taboo. Opposite. We have a lot of examples and a lot of uh, bi-directional pathway between the industry and the education. Uh, I, I disagree slightly with Dr. Walid in saying there is no trust. I would say maybe there is no enough examples of trust and positive relationship and cooperation between 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 both and let me start my answer by going back to 2000 2001 uh, i was at that period in one european country working in one engineering uh, uh, college and and i remember um, one of the students we what we used to do we put the student in a situation we call a rush and we tell them look we bring a an industrial need. A company needs something. Boom, this is what they need. Right? And we give you three days with full access to all the resources. What we need at the end is a description of a project and the proof of concept. You see what I mean? And that is a way to say to the industry first, look, I'm preparing really my students to face what you need. That's number one. Number two, you, you pointed a very important element is to have the industry contributing in the curriculum design. And this is, for example, something we do often at Khawarizmi International College. Every single department, every single program have a program advisory board. The program advisory board does not include academician. It includes reference point, uh, certification bodies, industrial body, and they meet once every semester to see the program, to discuss it, to see what are the outcomes. That's one thing happening. 
What we are also doing more and more is to invite industrial people during the delivery. Because, you know, uh, uh, I was participating in a, in a youth empowerment uh, uh, conference recently in UAE, and I said the following, look, we want people to be creative. We want them to be innovative. And all what we are doing is asking them a question about innovation and giving them definition about the innovation. It does not work like that. Put them in a situation where the only way to succeed is to innovate. I don't know if you, you know about the very famous uh, TV game, Kolonta. In Kolonta, we throw you in an in a Amazonia part, you know, of, of a jungle with very minor tools. You don't have food, you don't have water, you don't have anything. You have a few tools and a flu indicator and you are there and we tell you survive. And you know, 99% of the people survive. So, yep, there is more to do in having more, I would say, uh, um, fluent communication and integration between both. Because the sometime industry and academia look like or seems like two parallel, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, roads that never cross together. For a reason Dr. Walid mentioned, one is oriented on education and long time investment and uh, is not looking to the results immediately. And the other one is said, no, I invest one dollar now, how much I gonna get from it tomorrow? And that's the industry. And I believe that we can bridge them together. Uh, KAC have a lot of successful example in that, especially in the health, in the health science. We are, uh, for example, this week celebrating the RC week, the respiratory care week, and we got four or five of the industrial of the healthcare provider with us, with our students, seeing their competencies, challenging them. So I believe that's a very good example. And I believe uh, internship should not be just a course. You need to have internship and situation, this rush situation everywhere. That's the best way to let the industry feel that you are really making the students ready for them and make the student feel confident that they're gonna face it. And as you said it well, engaging more and more and more and more the industry when building the curriculum. A last word, if you are giving a final project to your students at the PhD level, it does not have to be a new method that. I remember two years ago, one student was asking me to supervise his PhD and they say, oh, I have a new method for, and I said, what's it useful for? Oh, we're gonna experiment how to solve the planning a problem in transportation. Who gonna use it? Which company need it? Which sector of transportation? His answer was, I don't know. I don't think so. And I said, look, this is useless. It's just an additional pill of paper on a shelf. That's absolutely useless. So do the opposite. Go to your country, go to your city, go to your, you know, uh, industrial area, see what problem are facing and start there. And once you identify a nice project that they need, even if it, it appear with no creativity, get back to me. And then we're going to build together to merge, you know, the academic requirement in term you need to innovate, you need to ideate, you need to experiment, etc. with a very existing need that you're going to contribute to solve in practical. Thank you, Dr. Nabil, yeah. for actually prepping the stage to the next one. Do you have a comment, Dr. Walid? Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Abla, I want to just to mention a very nice example. I, I went one time in Germany and in their education system, the student, they go one year at the university, the second year in, uh, to the industry they work. Third year in the, in the university, the fourth year in the industry. And before they finish the fourth year, they are already engaged with the industry or the company and they work there. Very nice. Dr. Walid, just, just to give to César what is to César, this model is alternating. Uh, it's, it's a French concept, alternance. And it's yes. not only year by year there, it's even week by week or month by month. Yes. And in fact, the whole education system is done in compliance. The alternance or the alternating schools started as uh, seen negatively. Uh, you know, but since five years, they are the one booming in Europe and yes. especially in France, and they are the one preparing in the best way, you know, the youth for the jobs of tomorrow. Thank you. That brings us to the, to the, to the next level. Thank you, Dr. Nabil, for closing remarks on the other one with the PhD, go to your countries, talking about discover the right thing to do next. And this brings us to this conversation. What did we do? Let's, we heard what the international firm's perspective, we heard the two fine gentlemen perspective. Now let's share our own perspective, humbly speaking. 
Now, we did our own little study uh, surveying uh, decision makers, CEOs, uh, students, uh, educators uh, in the region and around the world to share, to tell us exactly where they, they can see the, the future uh, employee uh, qualities. Uh, creativity was the, uh, the top, uh, uh, the number one. The next one was motivating. The next, uh, I'm sorry, uh, motivating, yes. The next was proactive. Uh, the, 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 the next basically was a team player. And with that, we created uh, a new forms of uh, what we call innovative career mix, where we bring together social interests, values, vision, goals, skills, skills what they take in college or they develop at workplace. And in order to, to develop a, a, what we call a crazy career path, a successful innovative career path, what Dr. Nabil was talking about is don't try to build up a, a pile of papers on things that has was done. Create something that is unique and new. So what we have done is instead of focusing on how to do the next thing right, this is what everybody is actually going to school for, uh, going to college based on the things that are done now or being done in the past. And focus, like for example, Dr. Nabil, when he used that example, instead of having one model for all to apply with the majority to fail, I we want you to focus on the right to do thing to do next for everybody's sakes. Now we are all able to, to climb up the tree. But from our own perspective, we create our own new standards. This is what the new the future of youth, when we talk about the creative youth or innovative youth by 2030. Not an individual to think climbing up the tree because I can and the others can't, but we can bring the tree down for everybody to climb up the tree. That's the mindset, the mentality that you need for the future. And this is what really made Einstein successful. Being curious, how to really turn things down, how to break the rules, how to create new rules. Uh, be, uh, and that's all what he was successful at doing. I have a famous friend of mine. He's a famous consultant to design houses. And he used to tell me he has a passion to learn traditions and figure out how to break them. <laughs> for the industry to come up with the most crazy ideas. So your success in the future is not just to follow the trends in the digital world or arbitrarily, uh, uh, but to actually think of how to change things around uh, for it to happen. And that, for, uh, and that takes you to be, become a wonderer. Uh, the Einstein guy, the person that wonders how to change the rules always. And when, you, when you're always thinking of how to change the rules, the, 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 the rules of the game, uh, the, the rules of engagement, how to business, you're going to always be ahead of business, not just the robots. You're going to always be ahead of education. <laughs> you're going to always be ahead of your instructors. You're going to always be ahead of me, Dr. Nabil and Dr. Walid. And what we really need to do is look at the world of curiosity. But we have a naturally evolving world of curiosity right now by Mr. and Mrs. Curiosity lounging right now, enjoying the, the little gadgets that they have with technology exploring the world, but we want to start guiding that curiosity world to make it happen for a reason, for a purpose. And in order to do that, we started looking basically in how to really come up with out of box and new ideas, relevant ideas, something of value, not just for playing games out of it. Since we have a youth that is curious, we, have, we, are, we are able to create not one Einstein, we are able to create 127 million Einstein by 2030, just by simple fact, allowing them the opportunity to be themselves, to think freely, to, to, to openly, how to break the rules, how to change things. Instead of giving them something says, I want you to do, the, to do this, build this, just exactly the way it is. It says, break it, tear it apart, figure out how else you can put it together. This is the kind of mentality I think Dr. Nabil and Dr. Walid is talking about in order for the change. Think crazy for a reason. Be disruptive. This, this is what I like with, I like with, with Dr. Ray. Troublemaker. <laughs> Troublemaker means not, this, not agreeing with me not all the times. Doesn't agree with me at all the times, basically. This is what my wife keeps telling me <laughs> most of the times, basically. And only crazy people are the ones who are going to change the world. Look at the technologies. The world we are living in today is the world created by what, who, what everybody thought at one point in time, crazy. And that's what that's going to change you. So we, we'll, at Talents of Endearment, we looked at everything that is going to help to create that transformative world uh, from that 
uh, uh, those guidelines. So what we focus in talents of endearment when we created it to create to create the crazy thinkers, to create the game changers, the disruptors, is all to focus on this to create discovering the right thing to do next. And this is what Dr. Nabil was looking at. Don't show me how the, all uh, your researches on what was done hundred years ago, but give me something in you. Go find out what else you can do. What else that could be done uh, for it to make it happen successfully, make it relevant, scalable, and sustainable. So we focus, when you start, we say, we have a saying, good brands make people feel good about you. That's based on the services that you do, that how to do the, the, the next thing right. But to become disruptive game changers, focus on how they, how to make people feel great about themselves. That's how you're going to come up with the great ideas. This is, this is what the great ideas, no robots would be able to do. No business is going to be able to compete with you. With, this is what Dr. Nabil was talking about. Go to your community, go to your village, go to your hometown. Figure out what, how, what the people really want looking for. So in Talents of Endearment, we are looking to bring that inherent inspiration that is really evolving throughout your lifetime from the point of birth, throughout your career time until you make it to high school, until you make it to college or to education or to, to job place. So we focus on, instead of focusing on the 15%, which is education, focus on, and most businesses are today, based on the technical skills that you have. We focus 85% of your success to building relationships because those relationships are the ones going to give you those crazy ideas. They are the one who's going to open up their homes for you to bring you in to start something new that nobody else has thought about. So we thought about the, how we're going to bring that curiosity world to perspective to be trusted by business. So we created an environment through talents of environment to mix them together. I like to call the students the curiosity world, the uncorrupt with standards. You see, in business, we like to have standards. In education, we like to have standards. We said, let's uh, the, to, to filter out those standards, the corrupt business with the, unfil the, the, the uncorrupt students and bring them together to filter out opportunities, not rules, not rules of engagements. Let, uh, we, 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 the more rules you provide, the more, the, the more you control the innovation, the more you kill the innovation. This is how we're able to, to bring up the unbiased out-of-box ideas when we mix students, high school students, college students with business in the, in the real world. And to do it, we created this a little fun table. I like it, I call my little heart. That's how big my heart is. And basically speaking, when on the right-hand side, the tangible basics, food, clothes, housing, health, education, transportation, ad communication, <clears throat> space, it doesn't matter. This is what you sell for, to make money. This is where you work to earn your, your income. Look at, this is 15% of your success. This is where robots are competing against you. This is the smart technologies are racing against you. You cannot win. What, they, what nobody else is focusing on is how to build up those relationships, focus, discover intangible basics of people, the market. Because without them, then you don't have markets. Their interests, their ambition, their skills that they need for their future, for themselves or their families, the talents that they need to, to, to grow, the relationships, the right relationships that they have. So, and then focus on bringing them together in order to make sure that we now we have 100% opportunity to enjoy, not based on the, because they need it, because they want to, uh, to do it. And that's the difference between the transformation that is required from the need to the want, because of the, based on the quality of the relationships. But we don't stop there in talents of endearment by creating that relevancy between people's aspirations and what you do, but we also scale you up by connecting you to people's lifelong journey based on our own created sustainable human development protocol, connecting you to people's lifelong journey from birth throughout their, li their lifetime to 65, 65 years and plus. But this is a, what, what, what we call a recyclable opportunities. So whenever, once you get started in this cycle, you don't stop evolving. You don't stop growing. You don't stop maturing. And that's how you become scalable, and that's how you become sustainable. For and that's what allow you to really create your own career path, your own business uh, enterprise. What you have. This is how we help you through talents of endearment in our own model to build value, to capture people, build business, and open up in new markets. This is how you are able to grow and create and become in demand for everybody that wants to be you, that wants to be with you, based on. Intrinsic motivation, because now you are allowing everybody through talents of endearment, and you connect to, 
uh, is to really motivate them, uh, bring out their inherent talents, their aspirations, to be listened to, not doing things because they have to. I go to college, I have to study because I couldn't, I couldn't pass my exams unless I study. And if I don't pass my exam, I'm not going to succeed. This is what we call uh, extrinsic motivation. I'm under pressure. I, I have to work this many hours, but intrinsic motivation means going to school because I want to, because I feel myself growing. Schools are hel is, hel is helping me to become something of value, not even uh, of benefit to business, but of value to society. That's the future of education. How do we really create a, a future minds that are able to socially grow in a community to create those opportunities in the local markets? And build, and that's what we focus on building the culture of we, because inherently we couldn't really build, break that down, climb up the tree, for 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 all of us to succeed. But we, we together with the we, we were able to bring that tree down for us to be able to climb it and do the same thing that was expected to. So in talents of endearment, we focus on diversity. Most businesses talks about diversity inside the business. Here we're talking about diversity in, in, in your internal and external environment. How to connect the people, engage them uh, with you, whether they are kids, uh, high, other high schools, alumni, professionals, businesses, uh, people of ethnic background, disabilities from around the world, because it's online system is, is designed in order to, to, to be able to expose to all of these potential opportunities that you have. You are like a train running across the tracks and loading up all these different people exposing to those ideas that they have. With everybody having a fair access to the information, to the same tools, the same capabilities, for, for, in order to not to be deprived of the opportunity to be to be to have the success that you really deserve. With this, everybody is feel uh, feeling uh, important, valued, appreciated. You will learn through talents of endearment when you build those relationships, whether with the communities or and business, how to make people feel valued. How to be valued? How how would how would you make everybody wants to be with you, to be around you, to be supportive of you, to be a reflective of you, to be wanting to be the, in the storybook of your success, to be to belong to you? And this is what's meanings of self belonging that everybody is pursuing in the culture in the culture of talents of endearment. We don't focus on how to be, to, be, to, to become a, a, a IT programmer. We focus on how to become a leader. Uh, the, the, when we talk about the, the, the 2 million uh, startup opportunities, when we are talking about the creating the 100 million jobs, when we are talking about creating a superstar uh, businesses, it doesn't come up because from the amount of capitals, but it comes up from the size market that you are able to build up and for you to grow. This is, becomes your mega superstar business that talents of endearment will, from, no matter how big or small you are, no matter where you are around the world, all what you need is a computer and internet connection to really be on the on the fast track of 2030 now. So we do it through two, uh, two types of programs, uh, Talents of Endearment Labs of 33 days uh, that will start actually from this is to stay motivated, productive, connect and engage with people to discover their aspiration, convert their aspirations to opportunities and uh, valid, validated business solutions and build the ecosystems to continue that pipeline to success. So what we do through that three days, we have five elements that we combine together uh, in, the, in the career mix. We focus here on the defined social pathway to success, social interest, value, vision, goals. And during those three, three, 33 days, this defines you and build the, your, 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 your social brand value that everybody wants to be around you. Now you become, you know, you have the characteristics of a successful person in the community, like what Dr. Nabil was talking about and sending the guy, the PhD to go to community, but it has to have a value. Where does it start? But then the second program is the Talents of Endearment Smart Internships, what we call a TESI. It's a 16 weeks, 112 days to really create future relevance. And the, now you are becoming the, the, the new normal of business in the world uh, of business. Now, instead of just the focusing on the five where we build uh, your character and that number six, you spend 79 days in order to, to align those uh, personalized characters with the skills that you need for the future. Now you have a mind that is connected to the, to the world of opportunities. 
with the skills that you have to use them. Now you are ahead of business. Now you are ahead of uh, robot. Now you are ahead of all the automation in the world that you can uh, subscribe to uh, worldwide. Mentors are field experts uh, in, in the varieties of areas picked from around the world. And what we don't, we don't stop there. We give you also three years platform space to build your ecosystem. We don't just show you how to do it and we don't just help you doing it, but we also allow you and, and stay with you for three years to grow. Because what we want to do is not important to us. Is It's not enough to have the right information and the right knowledge designed, put in place, but actually to put execution. And what we don't, we, and we don't stop yet there. What we do is provide you a lifetime support. So you're never alone throughout your career path. You're always getting the help that you need whenever you need that help. We don't stop there. We also, the people that graduate successfully from either of those programs will be accelerated to Talents of Endearment Capability Centers. They were able to start a professional career life uh, where they get paid on a project paid basis. So when we talk about creating 127 million opportunities, now we have a system. We're not gonna be probably satisfying the 127 million, but pretty sure that we are able to overcome a lot of the challenges for, for the majorities of those 127 million uh, youth by 2030 that we are looking uh, for. And this is how we actually transform youth straight to, business, to 2030 and beyond, because the skills that we are looking at it is not time limited. It, you have to have the talent that is agile. Dr. Wadi talked about VOCA. And, uh, but how do I really establish a, an agile VOCA that is for all times? Not just talking about what should be done, but how to do it. That is what Talents of Endearment created uh, for it. And, this, and we are actually in, in the process of putting out there several tech centers uh, around at universities worldwide in order to make that transformation happens worldwide. And this is how we help youth to become, to create sustainable career success they control, not in the control of anybody else in, the, in their life. And because to us, basically, the future isn't associated with AI. The future isn't associated with the digital digitalizations and the programs or the services you study or deliver, but how to win people's heart. When you win people's heart, the world opens up to you. The world of opportunities opens up to you. And this is exactly what Stellance of Endearment is about. And I'm proud to have Dr. Nabil as a member of the distinguished team that has actually worked very hard to bring this together uh, the, the, to light uh, with the successes that we have and enjoying. And with this, I stop because you are the future. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dr. I, I want to say one word before op opening the floor. Uh, you said when you uh, when you win the the the, the heart of the people, uh, you have everything open for you. Yes, but that's condition that you have the right know how and the right skill. So uh, there is a complementarity between what talent of endearment is bringing. You know, in terms of this uh, transversal skills and soft skills and way of connecting things with what universities and education system are bringing which is the vertical side of it you need to know about digital transformation you need to understand artificial intelligence you need to know about robotics you need to know about data mining but what is most important is your creativity your way of seeing opportunities your way of connecting this to the needs to the people and right. so in fact uh, just I wanted to clarify that so people does not think that, oh, we are speaking about emotion and it's only the emotional side and if you have it, that's fine. No, the emotional side will open you the door, then your skill will allow you to gain more and more confidence and then again with your emotion, you will be able to be adaptative and adapting to the VOCA environment that you are living into. Thank you. That's exactly what we're talking about in this table of the 16 weeks uh, that are running in the program. Uh, now we are open for any questions that uh, any of the audience would have. P please ask or forever hold your peace. Any questions? I think, gentlemen, we did a very good, very good job. No, nobody is having any questions in their minds. Okay, uh, let's, uh, since we don't have a questions, Dr. Nabil, would you uh, give us your closing remark? Uh, 
well, uh, very, very simple advice to the youth. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your study. Choose what you would love to do and do it with patience. When you come to universities, when you go to Khawarizmi International College, come with your patience. Do not come to secure a piece of paper, you know. Be passionate about what you are seeing. And honestly, our students in the respiratory care last week proved to us through, you know, building, scripting, uh, uh, recording, and making a movie that summarizes the skill, the know-how, and the journey of a, a, a respiratory care therapist proved to us that, yes, they choose that by being passionate, by loving it. So engage in your life. Do not let anyone decide for it, which means, yeah, there are rules. Yeah, there are frustrations. Yeah, there are hard moments. Deal with it, putting in mind that you are creating your future and building it under your hand as you want, as you feel it, but be open enough to learn from others, to grasp what is important and enjoy it forever. Thank you, Dr. Nabi, uh, Dr. Walid. Thank you very much. Uh, my final remark is uh, always I get back to the past. So the first industrial revolution, the machines took our muscle. In the second and the third industrial revolution, the machines took our what we call computational power and intelligence. Now the AI is taking out our intelligence, but the machines and AI will never take out the skills mentioned by Dr. Abu, the happiness, the empathy, the sociability, the innovation, the creativity. So if you want to beat the machine in a world controlled by machines, focus on this talent and you will be the ruler and the, the world and the, the boss of the future. And as Dr. Nabil said, love what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Walid. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nabil. Uh, one remark that I would like to leave you on. I always told my mom and dad, God bless their souls, when I graduated. Now I got my degree, it's yours. I want to do my thing. And whenever you go to your exam, remember those exams that you run your life for is for your instructors, not for you. Your future is in, in, in you control it. it, it the, the most successful people in the world today, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates are people who were kicked out of college, kicked out of the school, never finished it because they were disruptors. I'm not saying this is what you really need should to do, but don't limit yourself to the degree or to the piece of papers that's in college. You have a lot more potentials. You have more capabilities, not abilities that you really need to focus on in college or in business. You focus on abilities. What you really need to start focusing on your capabilities is this is what Talents of Endearment is about. Building up those capabilities to become different. Because being different is what's going to make you ahead in the future for business to want you, for robots to obey you instead of controlling. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, you will find in the handouts uh, tab a few links uh, to more information on the program and brochures uh, that you can download. Uh, share with us your reviews of the, and the surveys that you receive from the system. We'd appreciate your feedback because we, we strive uh, to actually make it always ahead and the best uh, for the world to take place. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed, safe time. Enjoy. Take care. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.